Did HBO's Euphoria steal the aesthetic of photographer Petra Collins? In an interview with Punk Magazine published in January 2023, translated from Hungarian to English, Petra was asked about her impact on contemporary culture and the aesthetic similarities that the HBO smash hit Euphoria bears to her work, and she responded by dropping this bombshell. I tell you the truth about that series, what was never told. I never talked about this publicly because it's such a crazy thing, but basically the reason I moved to Los Angeles was because Sam Levinson, who directed the show. He reached out to my agency and told, I wrote a show based on your photos, will you direct it? So I moved to LA and worked for HBO about five months. I was like, I'm directing the show. I created a whole world for it. I did the casting, whatever. And the last minute, HBO was like, we are not hiring you because you are too young. And that was like, fine, okay, thank you so much. They won't take my version of the show, obviously. I was so naive. They'll just do another one. So it was fine. I learned a lot. It was interesting. And a year later, I walked out of my apartment and see this billboard and it's exactly what I am as a copy of my work. I started crying. I was so shocked. I mean, it happens to me so many times in my career, but not on a scale like that. It was so intense to me because this is the aesthetic that I built all my life and now I have to change it because it enters the mainstream and it's been taken away from me. The worst thing was when people were unknowingly saying that this show looks like your photos. Petra began her photographic journey at age 15 after knee surgery ended her ballet dreams and the camera became her new outlet of expression. Her images highlighted the unique period when a teenager is transitioning into adulthood and her own work underwent a similar evolution. When asked by Punk Magazine about the development of the aesthetic that she became so well known for, Petra explained, I think this is interesting because it started so young. You can see the progression grappling with your sexuality and growing into women. The topic I was always interested in is sexuality, but it is changing as I grow and age. I started with a naturalistic style because that was me at the time. The real and truth telling was of show images. And as I grew, I changed my perspective on reality. So at one period, I moved into strong lighting and dark colors and moved into a more surreal work. For me at that time, or even now, I found that more real than trying to like document anything because of the shift that happened on the internet and how we perceive ourselves. After 2014, we made a switch to be half of our lives online. You are an avatar most of the day. If you try to capture what it is like to be human, it is a misstep not to bring in the surreal. We live part of us online. We present ourselves in a fully different way, as a whole different character. So my work is a step back into the surreal, but to me, it is the most real. That's how my work developed. I like to add assorted building sets or use prosthetics because it feels like real life as people edit photos, use filters, and present false realities. Petra continued about finding her new voice as a photographer with the 2019 photo book with the Hungarian title, Why Be You When You Can Be Me. That series was an exorcism to me. I had to change my style because of Euphoria. Lots of people started to take photos in that style and I haven't felt anymore as mine and I felt disconnected from that. I need to find my style I need to find myself again because I didn't resonate with this anymore. That was a big turning point in my life. That body of work I liked so much because I felt disconnected from my body, from my work. I was like, how do I get myself back to my body? I don't do self-portraits. I physically need to hold the camera because lots of my work come is in camera. I also felt violent towards myself and my body and I needed to create another version. And it was really therapeutic and exciting to place myself anywhere, photograph myself from any angle. That series was a starting point to create a newer style of photography for me. Neither Sam Levinson nor HBO responded to the Daily Beast request for comment. However, a source close to Levinson denied Petra's version of their encounter, telling the Daily Beast, it is very widely known that Euphoria is a remake of an Israeli show. According to the source, Levinson merely offered to throw her name into the ring to be considered to direct the pilot. As a fan of hers, he was hoping there was a possibility they could work together in that way, but by no means was anything promised. That wouldn't have even been possible for him to do because ultimately it's the network's decision, the source said. I've discussed this idea of inspiration versus imitation on another video, as it is a very common practice in the world of photography and the rest of the art world, but this case with Petra Collins and Euphoria is different. You cannot trademark a visual aesthetic, of course, and even allegations of copying can get thrown around needlessly, but in this case, where she was actually involved with the show in its incubation, but ultimately not hired, there is definitely something nefarious going on here. I feel terrible for Petra, not only having her identity copied by Euphoria, but then having to face allegations that she was actually copying them. Petra Collins did not get the opportunity to share with us her gift as a director in Euphoria, but she has since directed several music videos. 
Her first video to get significant buzz was Selena Gomez's Fetish in 2017, a big departure for the Disney star in the beginning of an enduring collaboration between these two women. In the video, the pair display the private moments of darkness that most are too scared to show, but they see as beautiful. The following year, they debuted a short horror film written by Melissa Broder, where Collins and Gomez were able to explore their love for that genre together. Collins and Gomez spoke to Dazed about their shared love of horror films, and Gomez described a time when Collins came over in the middle of the day and found me in my living room sitting with a big teddy bear watching Chucky so casually, and then you came and laid with me. At that point, it was clear we are on the same wavelength, added the photographer. The horror duo of Collins and Gomez is set to reach new heights with the upcoming feature film called Spiral about a former influencer whose obsession with social media is causing her body to fall apart. The project will be executive produced by Drake and his Euphoria co-EP, Future the Prince. Olivia Rodrigo is the second former Disney star to hire Petra Collins to help usher her career into a new stage of womanhood with her debut album. Their first video together was Good For You in 2021, where the picture-perfect cheerleader unleashes the rage bubbling beneath the surface and fantasizes about burning the whole world down around her. In the BTS clip, Olivia explains their connection. Petra and I really love expressing feminine rage, and we think that's something not always super commonplace in media. In Olivia's video for Brutal, Petra references her own story by starting off in a ballet studio where Rodrigo breaks her ankle. The pairing makes a lot of sense, since both women gained massive recognition in their teens and used their artwork to tackle coming-of-age stories, alienation, with an honesty that resonates as much as it shocks. For this very reason, Alessandro Michele began working with Petra Collins during his time as creative director for Gucci. Glenn Lutchford was the first to set the stage of this new Gucci universe under Michele, but Petra Collins honed in on the specific stories of the youth. The love between Michele and Collins has only grown since the pair met, and she herself has starred in several of his campaigns. Michele is one of the few designers that knows himself well enough to trust the other artists he works with, and allowing their own voices to shine. In this eyewear campaign for Gucci, Collins shares a fanciful depiction of a Hungarian childhood. Her mother fled Soviet-ruled Hungary during the 80s and raised her family in the suburbs of Toronto, but she didn't allow her children to watch Disney movies or cartoons. Instead, Petra grew up on the psychedelic, violent, but also beautiful Hungarian folktales from the 70s. I imagine the sting of betrayal is still around regarding Euphoria, but I applaud her for pushing even harder in her artistic vision. She has been able to find collaborators that not only appreciate her voice, but love to sing her praises and give her the credit she deserves. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this situation with Euphoria and what you think about her work since then. And of course, like and subscribe for more videos about the fashion industry and the people that shape it.